Today, we are going to recap a 1995 Hong Kong movie called $60 Million Man. It's a funny slapstick comedy movie starring Stephen Chow best known for Kung Fu Hustle and Shaolin Soccer. Spoilers ahead. Thank you for tuning in and have a great time. Meet our main protagonist, Sing, a super rich guy soaking up the good life in sunny paradise, Hawaii. Imagine waking up to a feast served right in your bedroom. That's Sing's daily reality. He's got a crew of servants making sure he's living the dream. But here's where it gets wild. Sing's not your average Joe. Instead of regular mouthwash, he goes for a splash of fresh cow milk. And when it's bath time, he's not alone. His swimming pool turns into a bath party with a bunch of hot, beautiful women. Oh, and forget cars, Sing flies around in a fancy helicopter. Tad is the man behind the scenes, managing every aspect of Sing's life. With a track record of always getting what he wants, Sing has turned annoying others into his favorite pastime. One morning, the dynamic duo, Tad and Sing, take to the skies in a helicopter bound for Sing's college. Known to everyone as the spoiled troublemaker with a penchant for silly pranks, Sing's antics are infamous. Yet, thanks to his influential father, no one dares to challenge him. Sing's favorite target is Su Fu, the school owner. A typical morning takes a bizarre turn as Sing breaks the toilet wall while Su Fu is inside, subjecting him to humiliation in front of the whole college. The poor guy, left naked and embarrassed, makes a hasty retreat while shedding tears. Sing and Tat revel in yet another prank triumph when a new face, Chen Chen, enters the scene. At first glance, Chen Chen startles Sing with what he perceives as her ugliness. His fury flares up, questioning why she got admitted to their college when he explicitly instructed the principal to admit only beautiful girls. However, Chen Chen, with a graceful response, reveals herself as the daughter of the professor, the science teacher. Unlike others, she isn't intimidated by Sing and calls him out for his senseless prank, much to Sing's annoyance. In the professor class, Sing strolls in late, as usual, and his classmate moves away and give him a lot of space. However, Chen Chen remains unfazed, staying put. The professor, choosing to overlook Sing's disruptive behavior, delves into a lecture about a groundbreaking technology that turns people into cyborgs. The class takes an unsettling turn when the professor dissects a dead body to illustrate the theory, leaving the students on the verge of passing out. During lunch break, Sing and Tat enter the cafeteria, prompting everyone else to steer clear out of fear. Chin Chin, once again, defies expectations by sitting right beside Sing and calmly enjoying her meal. Sing, attempting to flex his influence, threatens to get her expelled. However, the professor intervenes, asserting that it's not possible, and goes on to label Sing as the most disgusting student he has ever had. It's revealed that if Sing's father weren't the college director, he would have faced severe consequences for his annoying, troubling behavior. To test the loyalty of his classmates, Sing impulsively claims that his father isn't the school director. In an unexpected turn, his peers immediately pounce on him, delivering a beating. Furious after the incident, Sing, along with Tad, decides to retaliate by breaking into the professor house at night. Their plan involves setting up bear traps in the basement lab, hoping to teach the professor a lesson. However, just as they are about to leave, Tat spots a severed hand, inexplicably walking on its own. Initially skeptical, Sing brushes off Tat's discovery, thinking it's a joke and urges him to focus. Suddenly, a pair of eyes fixates on them, catching them off guard. In a frenzied attempt to catch the elusive hand, Sing and Tat are led into a corner, only to discover a half-human body. Convinced they are facing a ghostly encounter, panic sets in, and they make a hasty retreat. In their chaotic exit, Tat stumbles into the bear trap, and it got stuck to his butt. After a while, fearing an ominous experiment involving human body parts, they call the police. Despite a thorough search, the police find no trace of the eerie eyes or the hand. The police dismiss the notion as absurd, accusing Singh of wasting their time. Eventually, Tat and Singh are evacuated from the house. However, once everyone is gone, the hand and eyes reappear behind the professor, revealing themselves as one of his cyborg experiments. The next day, Singh, haunted by paranoia, dons football gear to defend himself against potential threats from the professor's experiments. Singh's father arrives from China, intending to surprise his son, but he is mistaken for an intruder and mercilessly beaten by Singh. Later, a sexy seductive neighbor named Bonnie knocks on their door. She'd been watching him for a while and Singh wastes no time in taking her to his private swimming pool for a seductive cleaning session. That night, they hit a club, drinking and dancing the night away. However, things take an unexpected turn when Bonnie spots her husband, a local crime boss. Despite their attempts to conceal themselves, the couple is announced as the winners of a dance competition, drawing the wrath of Bonnie's husband. Enraged, he takes them to his house to teach them a lesson. Upon returning home, Singh, in a drunken stupor, unknowingly knocks out Bonnie. Fleeing from Bonnie's husband and his henchmen, Singh reaches home breathless and terrified. Attempting to confide in his mother about the night's events, Singh is interrupted by her revelation. She slept with Tat 20 years ago. This shatters Singh's world as he discovers that Tat is his biological father and not Pei, the millionaire businessman. Pei overhears the conversation and is devastated by his wife's betrayal. Tat, attempting to reconcile, asks Singh to be his son. However, Singh, driven by financial motives, demands $2 million to continue being Pei's son. Tat is torn apart by distress as he has always considered Singh as family. 
In a moment of heated emotion, Singh impulsively kicks him out of the house to secure money from Pei. The weight of the decision weighs heavily on Singh, who realizes the deep bond he and Tat shared throughout their lives. Guilt-ridden, Singh reflects on his actions the following day, acknowledging the pain he caused to someone who cared for him unconditionally. Seeking solace, Singh visits a church for self-reflection and unexpectedly encounters Chin Chin. Opening up about his regretful actions, Singh begins to recognize the potential for change within himself, a revelation that even Chin Chin acknowledges. However, peace is short-lived as later that evening, Bonnie's husband dispatches his right-hand man, Mark, to eliminate Singh at his home. A suspenseful chase around the house unfolds, interrupted by a sudden blackout. When the lights return, it's revealed that Tad has arrived to save his son. Despite their efforts, they are captured, and their hands are cuffed together in a bathroom stall where Mark has planted a bomb. With the gangsters gone, father and son have only moments before the explosive device detonates. In a selfless act, Singh takes responsibility for the first time, cut off his arm so that Tat can escape. The ensuing explosion claims Singh's life, leaving Tat to grapple with the aftermath. However, the story takes a bizarre turn when the professor reveals a groundbreaking technology he has been developing. Singh, technically deceased but his lip is still alive, has his body reconstructed with artificial parts, keeping only his lips intact. Tat speaks to Singh's preserved lips, reassuring him that everything will be okay. The twist, however, comes with a hefty price. The cost of the surgery amounts to a staggering $60 million. Pei presents Singh with a morally challenging offer, get rid of Tad if he wants the money for the surgery. However, a transformed Singh, even reduced to a pair of lips, has a change of heart. He rejects his affluent father's proposition, choosing to remain in his pseudo-deceased state, unwilling to abandon Tad again. Desperate to restore Singh to his former self, Tat pleads with the professor for the surgery, armed with his meager $6,000. Despite the financial constraints, the professor, moved by Tat's desperation, agrees to perform the procedure. However, due to limited resources, the makeshift body parts yield less than ideal results. The professor tirelessly works, with initial attempts resulting in bizarre outcomes, square heads, tiny hands, and misplaced limbs. After weeks of experimentation, Singh is finally resurrected with makeshift body parts. As a cyborg, he faces the precarious reality that his body operates on a battery, susceptible to sudden failure. Although the professor replaces all parts except for one, finding a male genital proves impossible. As a result, Sing sports a unique solution, a faucet, humorously likened to a sink. They hold a fake funeral to divert attention from the gangsters, in which only Chin Chin attends. Sing observes her genuine sorrow from a distance, finding solace in the fact that someone cares about him. Two years later, Sing lives with his father, surviving on a diet of batteries. His peculiar showerhead genital aside, he seeks employment and is offered a teaching position by his college classmate, Su Fu. Ecstatic at the prospect of earning a living, Singh steps into a challenging new role as a teacher. His first day, however, takes a chaotic turn as he is bombarded with water buckets and paintballs by unruly students. A fellow teacher intervenes, revealing the grim fate of those who attempted to teach these troublesome students, resignations, disabilities, deaths, and mental breakdowns. Undeterred, Singh, now motivated to be the strictest teacher possible, bravely enters the tumultuous classroom. In a bid to assert dominance, Singh brandishes a knife to the unruly students, but they quickly turn the tables, trapping him in a net and bombarding him with their bags. The indifferent school principal turns a blind eye to the chaos, as the students are the offspring of powerful and wealthy businessmen. By day's end, Singh is left battered, crucified to the school gate, with his unique showerhead genital on display. Unexpectedly, Chen Chen emerges, transformed into a confident and beautiful young woman. Despite her attempt to help, Singh arrogantly insists on handling the situation himself. Chen Chen, now with a rich boyfriend, departs in a sports car, leaving Singh disappointed and disheartened. Back home, with hope dwindling, Singh's fortunes take an unexpected turn when the professor reveals a revolutionary chip that can turn him into a superhero, allowing him to transform into anything. Skeptical yet trusting, Singh undergoes the implantation. Experimenting with his newfound powers, Singh turns into a rice cooker and then a toothpaste tube for a night. Empowered by his superhuman abilities, Singh sets out to impress Chen Chen. Spotting her at a restaurant, he transforms into various objects, including a peculiar toilet, in a bid to win her over. Unimpressed, Chen Chen remains unmoved until Sing takes over a magic show, showcasing his powers to the audience. By the night's end, he and Chen Chen are flying in the sky using an umbrella as a parachute, and she reluctantly agrees to date him. With newfound confidence, Sing returns to the school, using his powers to teach the unruly students a lesson. They gradually start to obey him, transforming into model students. Singh's life takes a positive turn until the gangster Mark discovers he is alive and attacks. However, Singh effortlessly defeats him with his new powers. Not one to back down, Bonnie's husband, Mark's boss, transforms Mark into a cyborg, investing a staggering $60 million to make him superior to Singh. In a joyous celebration, Singh and Chen Chen tie the knot, surrounded by loved ones. Su Fu, seemingly attending the wedding, is exposed by Singh as Mark in disguise, leading to a heated confrontation. The festivities are abruptly halted as the two engage in a brawl. Mark, now wreaking havoc, unleashes random gunfire, causing panic. 
Amid the turmoil, Mark deploys a special weapon aimed at Singh, instantly killing him. Shock settles over the crowd until Singh revives, emerging from his burnt dead body, now resembling an old woman in a robe. The professor reveals that the chip activates Singh's revenge mode upon defeat, rendering him more powerful than ever. Embracing his enhanced abilities, Singh transforms into a colossal steam iron, flattening Mark. He follows up by turning into a microwave, trapping Mark inside. The professor, outside the microwave, activates it, melting Mark and ultimately defeating him. In the final scene, the professor playfully hits on Singh, who now appears as an old woman. Chin Chin intervenes, reminding her father that she's marrying Singh. That's the end of this recap. Thanks for watching and staying till the end. Please leave a comment, subscribe, share, and like. See you at the next one.